Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're just going to add a little bit to yesterday's lesson and focus a little bit more on how to justify whether your estimate is an overestimate or an underestimate. And this is pretty much always a free response question on the AP exam, and they're really, really, really picky about how you justify your answer in order to get full credit for it. So for starters, hit pause and do the same thing you did yesterday and approximate the cube root of nine. And then I want you to figure out if that's an overestimate or an underestimate and we're gonna work on why. So hit pause and do that on your own and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you did all right with that. For starters, we have to figure out what is the function we're dealing with, and then we have to write the equation of a tangent. So we need point and slope. The point of tangency is always a number close to the one they're asking about, but more convenient. So what's a number you can easily take the cube root of, and it's close to nine. So hopefully you knew that you're gonna use a point of tangency of eight. So we're gonna use x equals eight, and now we just need to write the equation of the tangent. So we find f plug eight into both the original function and its derivative. So we get point and slope. So f of eight would be the cube root of eight, which is two. So I have my point eight, two. Now find f prime. As you know, this is to the one-third power, so the derivative would be one-third x to the negative two-thirds. So my derivative, written a little prettier, is one over three x to the two-thirds. Plugging in eight to that, okay, remember this is the cube root first and then square. So if I plug in an eight for x, the cube root of eight would be two, square root, you get four, times three is 12, so my slope is one-twelfth. All right, write the equation of your tangent. Okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Typically, I move the two over to the other side, but you don't have to. And I do that, hopefully you could see that in the worksheet yesterday. I do that because that's kind of your starter point, and this is your change for how far away you are from here, from nine, okay? The cube root of eight is two, and our estimate's gonna be a little bit above or below it, depending on this. So now we plug in the nine. So the cube root of nine is approximately, we're plugging in an x of nine right here, okay? So we're gonna plug in a nine right there. So we get two plus one twelfth of nine minus eight, which is one, and two plus one twelfth would be two and one twelfth. And that is my estimate, okay? So now that's my estimated value of the cube root of nine. Now let's find the exact value, or as close as we can anyway, using a calculator if you want, of the cube root of nine, and let's compare. So I'm gonna put the cube root of nine in my calculator, and it's still somewhat of an estimate because it's a decimal, but it's 2.08. <laughs> zero, zero, eight, and it still has some more going on in there, okay? Well, what is this two and one twelfth? Let me divide one divided by 12 to see what decimal that is. One twelfth as a decimal, if I convert this to a decimal, it would be 2.083. So compare these two answers. This is the actual value, okay? All the way up to the zero is where it changes, and this is my estimated value. We're pretty dang close. But is my estimate above or below my actual answer? And you can see the estimate is above it. This is an overestimate, okay? So now remember, when you do these problems, the whole point of them is that you're supposed to not need a calculator. So you're not gonna be able to compare to the actual value, yet they're still going to ask you to justify whether you have an overestimate or an underestimate. So how do you do that when you don't have that calculator answer in front of you? So what made this an overestimate other than the obvious answer that it's above? We can't look to that as our reasoning. Well, the original function was the cube root function. The cube root graph looks like this. 
okay? So the cube root graph is both concave up and concave down, depending on where you're at. Well, we were looking at the cube root of 9, which is over on this side, over here. So the tangent on that side, if we draw a tangent, the tangent over here is going to be above the actual graph. So because the graph is concave down, that means our estimate is above it, and that's why we had an overestimate. So to determine whether your estimate is an overestimate or an underestimate, you, you, you have to use concavity, which means you need to use the second derivative to justify your answer. So if you know what the graph looks like, you can just say second derivative is negative, concave down, all right? And therefore, you have an overestimate, okay? If you know what the graph looks like. If you don't know what the graph looks like, then you have to find the second derivative, which is also not a big deal, okay? Now, here's the thing. You might think, oh, I got that, that's easy. Second derivative is negative, therefore the tangent is above it and it's an overestimate. That right there is still not enough of a justification, okay? Here's why. The second derivative is negative, but it's not always negative. The second derivative is negative here, but it's not negative over here. So you have to be just a little bit more specific and you can say, the second derivative is negative from zero to infinity because we know what that graph looks like, okay? Or, that, that would be okay if you said that, or what you do as a cheater, you just need to state that it's negative at that point that you care about, so from the point of tangency to wherever your estimate was. So the other way to write it is it's negative when x is between my point of tangency was eight and the number I plugged in, which was nine, okay? Or from eight to nine, okay? So you have to either state the entire interval where it's negative, the second derivative, or just write that it's negative from the point the, of tangency to the point that you plugged in, okay? So today we're going to do a whole bunch of problems, just, just, well, not a whole bunch, we're only going to do five. Five problems where we justify why your answers are overestimates or underestimates, and these are actual AP problems, so pay real close attention to how you have to write your answer, all right? Good luck, guys.